Is Winnipeg a hockey town? Well, locals have been known to call summer the season of poor skating. So yes, Winnipeg is a hockey town. And although there's a deep connection to the Jets, perhaps, its most famous team was the Falcons. At the 1920 Olympics, they thrashed all comers to win Canada's first ever hockey gold. There's a little known story behind that victory, and it's why on this Remembrance Day, the Falcons are the subject of a brand new Heritage Minute. The CBC's Red Sharon explains. The smaller ones that are painted will play up there where the camera's playing. And now showing the move, please. All right, here we go. It's busy on the makeshift set at the United Church in downtown Calgary. Roll sound, please. It's here that Historica Canada is recreating another Heritage Minute. Mark. What is arguably this country's greatest hockey story ever, right down to the Maple Leafs and the skates and the war. Action! The actors are playing the part of the Winnipeg Falcons, called by king and country, destined for the front lines. But in the shadows, a man for whom this is no act. Jim Busby watches as his great uncle, a man he never met, comes to life before his eyes. That's the man called poor George. Give him a good fight, Connie. <laughs> So this is him with the team here. That's right. This this is Frank. Jim Busby's dining room table is covered with the memories of his great uncle, Frank Buster Thorstenson. And uh, why did they call him Buster? Uh, they called him Buster because he uh, liked to use his hockey stick on people's ankles. Uh, okay. When it came to his personality, he was a spark plug on that team. Yes, he was. He's a very, very likable guy, a uh, very social kind of person. Uh, the team had a great deal of respect for him because of his abilities. The Winnipeg Falcons were always in tough, made up of Icelandic immigrants not allowed to play on other teams. But discrimination couldn't stop them from playing hockey and winning. And it didn't stop practically the entire team from signing up to serve their new country. If spirit alone could win battles, Canada was indeed well armed. Over 600,000 Canadians would join in the cause of the First World War. One in 10 stepped up to serve, the Winnipeg Falcons among them. They virtually, almost to a man, went down and enlisted. So the stretcher bearers would bring them in, drop them. Historian Norman Leach has researched the Falcons and was an actor and advisor on set. They just did it because it was the right thing to do. It wasn't bravado, it wasn't showing off, it wasn't to impress someone, it was just the right thing to do. Yeah. And um, they did it at great personal risk, but there was no question about that personal risk. We're gonna go, we're going to do it, and we're gonna do it for our friends and our family and our country. It was a cruel, bloody war, and the Falcons served with distinction. When it was over, the team would reform and in 1920 defeat all comers to win the Canadian championship, the Allen Cup. Weeks later, they would sail for Europe and the Olympic Games in Antwerp, Belgium. For the first time, hockey was a true Olympic sport, and those Icelandic Canadians, now war-weary veterans, would show the Europeans a thing or two. They never lost a game, beating the Swedes handily 12-1 to win the first ever Olympic gold medal in ice hockey for Canada. But Frank Buster Thorstenson wasn't with them. Private Frank Thorstenson's game came to an end in France during a trench raid. Several witnesses say they were launching these mortars that had gas in them. So there he is, his skin is blistered and burned, his lungs are blistered and burned, he's drowning. He's this little tough guy, and he's dying, and no one can do anything about it. It was a horrible, painful death. Frank died there at 6 o'clock in the evening on, on the 14th of March. Two weeks later, a long-range artillery shell would claim teammate and best friend George Cumbers. The two were buried just a few graves apart in Barlin Communal Cemetery in France. 
Had he survived, would Jim Busby's great uncle have been on that Olympic winning team? He sure likes to think so. In one of the Free Press articles, it actually said that uh, Frank was the best forward on the ice. Now, to put that in perspective, there were two future Hockey Hall of Famers playing there, Dick Irvin Sr. and Frank Fredrickson. They were also playing in that game, and my great uncle was considered the best guy on the ice. Well, what can I say? <laughs> that tells you something, doesn't it? Yeah, another rehearsal. So being there to watch his great uncle come to life was quite an emotional time for Busby, even just reading the script. And when the moment came, the actor playing Buster was carrying something special tucked inside his jersey. Great, great. It was really good. Thanks a lot. This is the last Christmas card that Buster mailed home before he was killed. So he carried it while he was filming. That felt great. <laughs> that was, uh, that, it, I mean, it, uh, It was pretty cool. <laughs> I really enjoyed it. Yeah, it's, uh, it was really, uh, really quite something. Really an honor to see that. A moment in time, the day those scrappy Icelandic Canadians showed the world a thing or two. And Frank Buster Thorstensen, the hockey player turned soldier who never came home. I don't think your great uncle will be forgotten as long as you're walking the earth. No, no. When I say, and here, lest we forget, uh, I have names and pictures of people that I can actually attach to that phrase. It, it does really mean something to me. Uh, and it, those memories I carry, yeah. Red Sharon, CBC News, Winnipeg. The Heritage Minute will be launched officially later this week, first at the Canadian War Museum, and then at the Hockey Hall of Fame. But you don't have to wait. Here it is. Wasn't easy growing up on Sargent Avenue. Bunch of Icelandic boys, nobody wanted around. But hockey was good to us. We're signing up then, George. <laughs> Only if Connie here joins up with us. <laughs> and the war came along. Broke up the team. But we were needed. Yeah, and we went. It cost us. Too much, maybe. I don't know. But I do know one thing. We still got some fight left in us, right, boys? It's the game we've been saving it for. For us. Yeah. For Canada. Yeah. For the boys of Sergeant Avenue. Yeah. The Winnipeg Falcons served Canada in the First World War. Two teammates never made it home. The rest went on to win the very first gold medal in Olympic hockey.